Welcome to our outdoor service. I'm just going to move up here because there seems to be a huge gap between us and I'm just kidding. I'll move back. I don't know why everybody decided to go to the back row, but I guess we're all Baptists, so. Front row seats are available. Half price. Half price. So hopefully you got a bulletin on your way in, as well as a song sheet. Uh, we'll be singing from uh, the pages this morning, uh, instead of from the screen, which we do not have. So make note of your bulletin if you would. Just a few things that we want to make you aware of. First off, the Playfords are here. Luke and Bailey and the three boys landed on Friday. They took off, I think they were at the airport at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, so the boys got off the plane in their pajamas, but uh, it was great to pick them up and uh, head out to their self-isolation. And so they're going to be here on the island for a little bit. And we're looking forward to meeting them next Sunday. Most of you will meet them next Sunday. So very happy that they are here. There are a few uh, needs uh, still. Uh, so if you have an extra vehicle, uh, preferably a van, uh, or uh, are able to help out in other ways, maybe we can chat after the service. And uh, we'll be able to uh, put all that together for them and the, the second week that they're here. Right now they're stuck. So Also, hopefully... Uh, many of you, all the uh, members at least, have heard of the proposed uh, new uh, service format post-COVID, which at this point looks like it won't be over until sometime in 2023. Uh, just joking. But um, the original st uh, step five in the moving forward plan was supposed to be today. That has been delayed until mid-October. Uh, but um, the proposal has gone out to all the members, to all the ministry directors, uh, but next, uh, we're hoping to post that on social media. Whenever that Sunday date is, that we'll be able to uh, be back all together, all at the same time. Uh, we'll make those adjustments. But uh, we're just trying to let everybody know the plan for when we're all back together again. And then a lot of our ministries start back up again. So our men's breakfast on September the 18th, that's this Saturday. And then on next Sunday evening at 6 p.m. is our couple's night out. Uh, the Lazamas are our new marriage ministry directors, and they did post uh, an online sign-up sheet on social media. We'll try to repost that, but if you could sign up for that, that'd be great. We're going to begin a series on communication in marriage. Uh, how many uh, do not struggle at all with communication? No communication problems. Anybody? All right, good. Tom, excellent. All right. <laughs> I think we all could use some help with our communication. And uh, so looking forward to that. So no matter how long you've been married, uh, or if you are in the process of getting married or desire to be married one day, you are welcome. And we'd love to have you out for that next Sunday night at 6. And then our Ladies Night Out is back, and that is on Tuesday, September the 21st. So not this Tuesday, but next. Looking forward to that. Uh, a new study continuing. We finished the book of Genesis, now into the book of Exodus with our teacher, Jen Wilkin. Uh, the God of Deliverance, so looking forward to that starting up. And then on the last Sunday night of the month, the 6th, 26th of September, for members, there is a members meeting, special members meeting. It'll be a Q&A time with Luke and Bailey as we consider them as potentially our next associate pastor here at Grace. Uh, and so you're all welcome to be there. We're going to pray together at 6, and then the meeting starts at 7. So looking forward uh, to that. I believe that's all the announcements, and I believe we have given enough time to the musicians to figure themselves out. You believe so, do you? I have believed incorrectly, so I'll, I got a few jokes I can tell. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, I think we're ready to go. So let's pray, and we'll continue with our service here this morning. Father, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to gather together as the church family here at Grace Baptist. We are so blessed. Thank you for beautiful weather. Thank you for a beautiful location and for hospitality of the Lairds. Father, we're just so looking forward to this morning to be able to sing together and fellowship together and to stick around afterwards and enjoy food together. And so, Father, thank you for this day. We are so blessed. Father, remind us again this morning of your sovereignty. So often we forget. 
and perhaps especially during the time period in which we find ourselves, it is easier to forget. And to the degree that we forget that you are Lord over all, oftentimes to that same degree, or even greater, we grumble and we complain. Father, I believe we've all been guilty of complaining and grumbling and murmuring, and uh, even with the extension of COVID regulations and these things, Father, myself included, we've all been tempted to not fully trust you and, and instead bring our own commentary, finite and weak that that may be, into the situation. So I just pray that you'd remind us again this morning that you have never left your throne, you ha will never leave your throne, you are Lord over all, you are in the heavenlies, and all things are working according to your plan, and we do know the end that you have for all things. And it is a glorious end indeed. So, Father, give us comfort and hope this morning, we pray. Father, thank you for our extended family serving you in different parts of the world. We think this month in particular of the Muirs. We're so thankful for Greg and Lily and their faithful ministry. The country of Bolivia, we pray that as they continue to share the gospel, that you will continue to bless their ministry there. Thankful for their return uh, back to Bolivia. And we certainly continue to pray for them. Father, thank you for the extended family that we have across the Maritimes and across our country to be a part of the fellowship. We're so thankful for that. And Father, I just pray you would bless our sister congregations uh, even today as they share the gospel where they are at and model it as well. And so Father, turn our eyes upward rather than inward, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. On. There we go. Good morning. Thank you for joining with us this morning. I'm going to start by reading from Psalm 35, which says, Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O servants of the Lord, who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel as his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all deeps. We're going to sing about the greatness and the goodness of our sovereign God. And would you lift your voices with us this morning? We're going to need your help. We're just a small group this morning, so we're going to need your help, your voices to fill out our sound, okay? Jesus, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here in us. Jesus, there is no one greater. You alone are Savior. Show the world your love. King of heaven, come down. Just glory reign, shining like the day, King of heaven come. King of heaven rise up, who can stand against us? You are strong to say in your mighty name, King of heaven come. by your glory we cry Jesus set our hearts to want you that every eye would see you lifted high King of heaven come down King of heaven King of heaven come, King of heaven rise up, who can stand against us? You are strong to save, in your mighty name, King of heaven
I'd tell some jokes, but I don't know any. <laughs> All right. You have to be a little more patient with us than you are normally. I mean, you're always patient with us, probably, but you have to be extra patient today. <laughs> oh, Lord, my rock and my redeemer, greatest treasure of my longing soul, my God. Like you, there is no other. True delight is found in you alone. Your grace to fail to deep to fathom. Your love exceeds the heavens. is good and my unending need. Oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer, strong defender of my weary heart. My shield to fight the cruel deceit. Against his hateful darts, my soul. When you retire to sorrow, no wrong words. There we go. My hope. When times of sorrow rise, my joy. When trials are abounding, your faithfulness, my refuge. Precious Savior of my ruined life, my guilt and cross laid on your shoulders, in my place you suffer, bled, and died. You rose the grave and death are conquered. You bonds of sin and shame. Oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer, may all my days bring glory to your name. May all my days bring glory to your name. I had it all queued up. There we go. Psalm chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Say, Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take, to get, take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. Would you pray with me this morning as we continue to worship together? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this uh, beautiful day where we can be outside in your creation and just worship together, enjoy the fellowship and community that we have here at Grace. And Lord, we pray that you uh, will give us uh, clarity, Lord, ever more, as, especially in these times, Lord, where a lot of different political issues and, and uh, with our current pandemic situations, Lord, so many things can, can cause us to not want to follow the rulers you've set in place, Lord. I pray that you will give us uh, 
judge, uh, a good clarity and judgment, Lord, to decide where to follow you and where to follow the authorities, Lord, and just to for the clarity. And Lord, I just thank you for our church here this morning. I pray that we we'll have a great time worshiping together in your name.
Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. So this next song is one that, as a church, we used to do a lot together, and it's just one that kind of fell in the <laughs> between the files, I guess, and given the context of Pastor Jeff's sermon this morning, which is speaking to the supreme sovereignty of our one true God, I just really felt that this was a song that we could almost relearn together because this, the song is a commitment to trusting in God's control and um, desire to be in the intimate details of our lives and to have 
ultimate authority and sovereignty over them. So would you relearn this song with us this morning? Sovereign in the mountain air, sovereign on the ocean floor, with me in the calm, with me in the storm. Sovereign in my greatest joy, sovereign in my deepest cry, with me in the dark, with me at the dawn. In your everlasting arms, all the pieces of my life, from beginning to the end, I can trust you. Pastor Jeff comes to uh, preach God's word this morning. Let's pray together. Dearly Father, I thank you again for the time where we can worship together. I thank you for this church and the opportunity that we can have just to gather all together in one group this morning. I uh, thank you for Pastor Jeff for his faithfulness to your word and, and to this church, Lord. And I pray that you will speak boldly and freely through him this morning in your name. Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles if you would head to the book of Psalms, or the books of the Psalms, and this morning we're going to be looking at Psalm 115, the first three verses. We are going to take a two-Sunday hiatus from the book of Romans. This is something that we've done in the past, and in order to introduce the theme that is coming next year. Uh, as well as to reorient us, and perhaps also give us a, a small break from our uh, book study of the year, and then we'll dive back in in a few Sundays. But this Sunday we want to move to Psalm 115, verses 1 uh, through 3. Our theme for next year is going to be gospel purity, remaining deeply rooted in Jesus. And the book that we are going to be looking through for the year is the book of Leviticus. Can I get an amen? <laughs> that was weak. Amen. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> Thank you. We, um, I hope, have been enjoying going through the book of Romans, really understanding what the gospel is and also what it produces in us. 
And then the goal in 2023 is to go through the book of Hebrews. But in order to do that, I think we need to go back to the book of Leviticus and understand the Old Testament sacrificial system and how all of that points to Jesus. And so I hope that you'll stay with us as we go from Romans to Leviticus. But this morning we're in Psalm 115, verses 1 through 3. We are not sure what occasioned this psalm, or I should say when this psalm was written or about what events this psalm refers. There are a number of different um, guesses, educated and otherwise, as to when this psalm was written or the events about which it is talking, but we don't actually know. But essentially what is happening in a broad picture sense is that the nations that do not believe in the one true God are looking at Israel's situation and asking a question which will be revealed to us in verse 2 of our psalm. Where is God? You say that you believe in God. You say that you trust God. You say that God works all things for good, as we have just sung. You say that following God is worth it. You say that God is beautiful. You say that God is love and truth and goodness and kindness and protection and love and these and so many other things. And yet your situation does not seem to back that up. So where is your God? Now in our current situation, what is impacting us is impacting everybody else. And so it is not that Christians, those that believe in the one true God, are being singled out. But to hear from some, you would think that was actually the case. And so, the question, I think, still remains, from those that do not believe in God, certainly. You say that you trust God, and yet your entire Facebook feed and every conversation I've had with you over the last 18 to 20 months seems to indicate that you don't actually trust God. So what's going on here? And I thought it might be helpful for us, especially in a week where we had some News that once again uh, extended regulations and other things. We're questioning whether we'll ever be out of this and those sorts of things. Perhaps complaining and griping and grumbling and murmuring. But what needs to be done, perhaps, on a very regular and consistent basis, is to remind ourselves of who God is. And so let's do that. So hopefully you're there in Psalm 115. And I want to read the first three verses this morning. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. For the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Why should the nation say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. This is the word of God. In verse 1 then, the psalmist, as is common in the Psalms, wants to reorient our perspective. How often our failures come because of an improper perspective. And so we are looking at what appears to be the largeness of the situation instead of the bigness of our God. We seem to be using the finiteness of our intellect instead of the wisdom of an infinite, almighty God. We tend to look at our solutions for the current problems, which of course are amazing because we're amazing, so... If only we were in charge, things would be different around here. Instead of gratefully submitting to the one who's actually in charge. And so verse 1 helps us to gain proper perspective. Notice in the first place, it reminds us of our sinful bent. The nation of Israel is in trouble. They're going through some times that they don't enjoy. They're facing struggles. 
Things are not the way that they want them to be. And so, what would be very easy is for them and us to reach out and ask for a change in situation for us. And the psalmist says something, and he doesn't just say it once, he says it twice, to remind us of our bent inward. Not to us, O Lord. Not to us. Our natural bent, without the transforming power of God's Holy Spirit because of Jesus Christ and for His glory, is inward. We naturally care about ourselves. We naturally want everybody to listen to our thoughts and opinions. We naturally want to be heard. We naturally want things to go the way that we want them to go. And we naturally advocate for and elevate ourselves. And the psalmist says, part of gaining a proper perspective and regaining a proper perspective is reminding ourselves of our sinful bent and asking for forgiveness and moving forward for God's glory and not our own. And so he repeats this line, and it would do us good to repeat it as well. Not to us, O Lord, not to us. I am grieved by the number of Christians and certainly the number of Christian leaders who have made this time that we have been in all about them. That is always sin. But what a grievous sin when I think one of the things God may be doing through this is causing us to turn to Him. We always make it about us, don't we? And so the psalmist says, not to us. Notice in the second part of verse 1, rightly fearing God, but to your name give glory. We operate in God's environment. We operate under God's authority. We are a part of His economy and are working out His plan. And the fear of God, the scripture says elsewhere, is the beginning of wisdom. And it's difficult to, in a very short period of time, define the fear of God. It is, on the one hand, not a panic-inducing, petrifying fear, per se, but it is also not simply just awe and respect. The word is a good one. It's a biblical one. And I would commend to you a book by my friend and brother, Michael Reeves, Rejoice and Tremble, all about the fear of God. But another part of reorienting ourselves and gaining the proper perspective is remembering the one to whom we answer, the one whose plan we are a part of, not the other way around, and submitting graciously and gratefully to that. How often have we complained this week, this month, this morning? How often do we murmur, gripe, to the degree that we understand the fear of God, to that same degree we begin to be grateful instead of grumbling. And so the psalmist says, our bent is inward, God, save us from that inward bent and turn us outward and upward because your name is the one that should be glorified. And notice in the third place, we rejoice then in God's character. Why is God to be glorified? It would be enough just simply because he's God. But notice there's two parts of the character of God that the psalmist highlights. For the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Our God is love. Love is not a concept outside of God to which he adheres. He defines what love is for us. And this situation that none of us saw coming and none of us are happy about, I don't suspect. There may be the odd few. Introverts of the world unite. We can be tempted to believe that God has ceased to love us. And if we look at our situation, it seems to speak to a lack of love. 
But in order for us to continue to have the proper perspective, we not only need to remember our sinful bent and reorient our perspective outward and upward, we need to remember the God whom we serve, the God who gave himself for us, the God who defines for us what love is. Therefore, none of this current situation can be unloving because it comes at the hand of a God who is love. And that ought to help us. God's heart, God's motive is never hate. It can't be. It's never to destroy us, to harm us, to do evil to us. We have an enemy that desires that for us. But that is not our God. And so the many circumstances that Israel found themselves in in the current circumstance or circumstances that we find ourselves in, we need to continually remind ourselves that these things come at the hand of a loving God, a God who is love. And then notice His faithfulness. Perhaps we have been tempted during this period of time to believe that God has forgotten us. Perhaps we have been tempted to believe that He does not have our best interest in mind. And yet, our God is everlastingly, eternally faithful. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. Never. Not even in our darkest hour. Not even in situations that we feel nothing but darkness, nothing but overwhelmed, nothing but not even able to keep our heads above water. Our God does not leave us. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. He is always faithful. Even this morning, in our scripture reading from the book of Ezekiel, God using the analogy of a vine, a branch, a branch that is not useful for much, and then burned in the fire is even more useless. And God says to his prophet Ezekiel, that is the judgment I'm bringing upon my nation of Israel. And yet, what does he say even in that, all, that passage? A passage that does not seem to have a lot of hope. There is something that remains. We do not deserve God's grace. We do not deserve His love. We deserve His rejection. We have not handled ourselves as American, North American evangelicals well at all during this crisis. Overall, we don't deserve God's faithfulness. We don't deserve His love. We don't deserve His patience, His kindness, His goodness, His gentleness. And yet our God is faithful through it all. Notice then in the second place, in verse 2, an improper perspective. We should not be the ones questioning where is God. We're the ones that are supposed to believe in Him and trust Him in all things. The nations say, though, in verse 2, where is their God? How can you say that God is love? How can you claim that God is faithful through all of this? Where is your God? This perspective is the opposite of what we see in verse 1. This is an inward bent. Life is not running the way I want it to. Things are not happening the way I would have them happen if I were in charge. From an improper perspective and from an inward bent comes sinfulness. They do not fear God. They're mocking this God that you say exists. Where is he? He was supposed to show up like an hour ago. You say that you trust him. As many have said down throughout scripture and history, what good is it to trust God? This is a perspective that does not fear him. And this is also perspective then that does not understand that God is love and God is faithful and so many other things. The third place then, and I have taken this from Michael's title of his new book on the fear of God, Rejoice and Tremble. Notice verse 3. Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. Notice in the first place, God's place. God is in the heavens. He is on the throne. He is the one who has always existed and will always exist. He is the one 
that spoke all things into existence from nothing. He is the one that rules over all. The rest of this psalm compares the one true God to the idols of the nations. They are made by human hands. They have ears, but they cannot hear. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They do not have minds. They are nothing. But our God, the psalmist says, is in the heavens. He's the one that spoke all things into existence, and he's the one that rules over all things. And so the fear of him is the right perspective and the right response. And also gratitude to him. When things appear to be the most out of control, we need to remind ourselves that our God is always in control. There are many times through human history, recorded in Scripture and otherwise, where things seem to be bad and certainly worse than they are right now. But our God is always on His throne. Everything is happening according to His plan. He is sovereign over all. But notice something that is implied in the first part of this verse that you might miss on first reading. Where is our God? Our God is in the heavens. And so notice in the second point, under point three, God's perspective. What is our perspective? Our perspective is where we're at right now. Our perspective is our close surroundings. It might extend island-wide, but even then our, our perspective is severely limited. We think we have a broader perspective, but we do not. We are largely unaware of most of what is going on. And where is our God? He is transcendent. He is outside of planet Earth. His perspective is eternal. His perspective is all-encompassing. His perspective is truly universal. So all of our thoughts, perspectives, ideas, opinions, relate to our very, very, very feeble, weak, and small perspective. Definitely finite perspective. But our God is in the heavens. His perspective is infinite. It not only stretches through the entire universe, it stretches down through time all the way to the beginning and all the way to eternity future. His perspective is limitless. Ours is extraordinarily limited. And so all those posts, all of those experts who got their medical degrees from Facebook University have a very limited perspective. But our God is in the heavens. And notice then, lastly, under that point, one of the greatest succinct statements about the sovereignty of God in Scripture. He does all that He pleases. God does not have to check with anybody else. God does not have to run His plan by a committee. Our God is in the heavens. He does all that He pleases. Not some, all that He pleases. Because He is love, because He is truth, because He is goodness and mercy and grace and compassion and kindness and holiness and righteousness, because He is all of these things. His ways are always best. His plan is always best. And what He pleases are those things that match His perfection. And all of those things he does. Now, unchecked power of that nature would be terrifying were it in anyone else's hands but our God. And yet in his hands, in his graciously sovereign hands, what a, what a comfort that ought to be to us. Grace Baptist, none of this took by God by surprise. God wasn't sitting up in the heavenlies March of last year watching the news cycle and suddenly got hit with COVID-19. Where did that come from? That wasn't part of the plan. 
No, our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. All of this is by his good and graciously sovereign hand. We don't know all the reasons why. We don't know how long this is going to last. We were sick of it 17 months ago. We don't have the answers. We are frustrated. We are confused. We're angry by times, despondent by others. We're certainly less than hopeful. And so let us remember to reorient our perspective. It's not about us. It never was. It never will be. It's about Him. He is to be feared. He is to be obeyed and submitted to because He is good. He is love and He is faithful. An improper perspective causes us to doubt, to fear, to complain, to gripe, to grumble and murmur. We should not be the ones asking the question, where is our God? But we should remember that our God is in the heavens, ruling over all things, with a heavenly perspective, able to see things that we can never see, not only spatially, but also chronologically. And so everything is in His good and graciously sovereign hands. So what is our response this morning? Where we have failed, let us repent. And let us remind ourselves of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everywhere we fail, he has succeeded on our behalf. And so let us turn to him as always. And let us live under the proper fear of God. Before we post or repost that thing, before we share that opinion or thought, or before we go on a rant, before we gripe and grumble and complain, before we question God, before we doubt God, before we do what those who make no pretense of knowing and loving God do, before we do any of those things, let us remember, it's not about us. It's all about the one who is love and faithfulness and goodness and kindness and truth. Let us not have the same perspective as those who make no claim to believe in the one true God. But let us rejoice and be re-energized and comforted and challenged and changed by the fact that our God is in the heavens and he does all that he pleases. He has not left us. He does not take vacation. He does not take a break. He does not need naps. Our God is the Almighty One, from everlasting to everlasting. Yahweh, the Lord of lords and the King of kings. He has not and will not leave us. He has not and never will forsake us. So let us rejoice in Him, where we have not Thank God for Jesus Christ. So based on His sacrifice on our behalf, let us repent and let us move forward more in the fear of God today than we were yesterday. Because our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases, including bringing a global pandemic to bear on the world that he created. God is not unaware of this. God is allowing this for what we do not know. But if out of this, the only thing that happens is that his people remember him and people that do not know him are introduced to him, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Let's look to him in prayer this morning. Father, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to gather as Grace Baptists, as your family here at Grace. We're so thankful again for the beautiful day, the beautiful weather, the beautiful fellowship we have had, and the beautiful fellowship we will continue to have we're so thankful for the freedom that we have. We're thankful for those in positions of authority. Father, we have been instructed to pray for them. We try to do that regularly. We need to do that more. 
Father, thank you for your sovereignty. Forgive us for times and seasons where we have doubted it or questioned it. But Father, may it be always a balm for our soul that you are in the heavens. You know all things. You see all things. You are not tyrannical. You are not despotic. You are a good and gracious and loving and kind and compassionate and holy and just and righteous and true Heavenly Father. We can trust you. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you, to fear you, to not, as those who do not know you and even hate you, claim and question where are you, but to be able to say in every circumstance, God is here. He's always been here and he always will be here. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He loves us and he is faithful and kind and true. And all of the things that are happening and all the things that will yet happen come from his good and gracious hand. And so, Father, thank you. Reorient our perspective, even this morning we pray. May we live under the proper fear of you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's sing one more song uh, this morning together since we're not really on a time crunch this morning. Uh, we're going to sing the creed, this I believe. Sing along with us.
so much once again for coming this morning, even if it was just for the corn. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, just a few announcements. We do have a thank you note that we'd like to read. We would like to thank the wonderful members of the church that gave us diapers and wipes. It was a great blessing. Thank you so much from Olivia and Brian. So thank you so much to all who gave some diapers and wipes, uh, and uh, they will be blessed by that, I am sure. After the benediction, uh, you are free to roam around a little bit. Uh, the food will be up closer to the main road, so as you kind of are getting up out of your chairs in the next 45 minutes or so, um, if you want to take those chairs and kind of move them up onto the, the paved driveway and up more towards the front lawn, and uh, food will be available um, closer to the noon hour. There will be some hay rides. I have on fairly good authority that those will be happening for those that want to participate in that. Feel free to mix and mingle and uh, just fellowship with one another. And uh, we'll just uh, enjoy our time together on into the afternoon. So once again, thank you for being here, not just for the service this morning, but also uh, for this event. What a great time of fellowship. Our benediction then this morning comes from the same passage, Psalm 115, verses 12 and 13, a benediction right here in our psalm. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both the small and the great. In Christ, if we are in Christ this morning, we have all been blessed. And we look forward to the blessing when none of this, of disease and the rest of it, will be a part of God's creation. And so looking forward to the future, we can rejoice and trust in the present. Let us do that and encourage others to do the same. Thank you so much. I would say you're dismissed, but now you no longer have to listen to me. Mm -hmm.